Good afternoon, everyone. Firstly, apologies for the delay. Uh, Gary Cornish's flight delayed three hours from Inverness this morning. He is en route, he's landed. He'll be with us in about 20 minutes, so he's going to be joining us up here in the course for head to head. But we didn't want to keep you waiting any longer before we, we get underway. Um, this is a very exciting moment for Anthony Joshua, and one that we're very proud of the way this has been manufactured and, and moved towards exactly where we want to be. It was important for us to go the traditional route for Anthony Joshua, and of course that involves Commonwealth titles, British heavyweight titles, European heavyweight titles, and this is his first major title fight against Gary Cornish for the Commonwealth title on September 12th at the O2. Um, British boxing at the moment is absolutely flying, and you know you would have seen the show on Saturday night from Manchester. Incredible night of boxing, Anthony Crawler, so unlucky not to become another world champion for Britain. Scott Quigg looked absolutely sensational. So many world champions, so many great young prospects, so many that are even on the table with us today. It's a real proud time to be associated with British boxing, and as always, we thank you for your support. And of course, um, no one we can thank more than our exclusive six-year six -year partner in Sky Sports. And uh, over to the head of boxing, Adam Smith, to say a few words. Thanks, Eddie. I just want to say, first of all, um, what a great show it was at Manchester Arena on Saturday. Uh, I think it had everything. You know, we've been there time and time again over the years uh, with the likes of Ricky Hatton, uh, David Hay, uh, and many, many others. Mike Tyson even fought there against Julius Francis. It's a, a terrific venue, um, an amazing atmosphere on Saturday night, especially for for Scott Quigg and Anthony Crawler. I thought Scott Quigg's performance was stunning. Uh, I think he's had a lot of criticism um, uh, and, and sort of unfair at times too. Uh, but with Carl Frampton winning overseas and, and Scott Quigg putting on that sort of performance against Kiko Martinez, uh, obviously the, the interest in that just um, increases and increases. As for Anthony Crawler, um, you know, it's a cliche, the nicest guy in boxing. There's plenty of nice guys up on this table here. But he is a thoroughly decent chap, and he's, uh, he's from what he's, where, he's, where he was six, seven months ago to where he was uh, and where he should have been on Saturday night once that bell went at the end and should have become a world champion. It's a phenomenal story. Um, and I, I swapped messages with him yesterday because I said to him, look, just hold your head up high. I thought the way he dealt with what happened it was so classy, such a dignified response. It's the sort of guy he is. He must have been absolutely devastated inside. I thought, like everyone else, that he deserved to be a world champion. Um, I've been talking to Eddie, and I really hope that that rematch can happen in Manchester. Uh, it will sell and pack the place out. He deserves it uh, hugely. He was a fantastic performance. But the whole night with Sam Eddington, Tyro Nurse, I thought, should have become a British champion too. I thought it was a terrific night. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, to the ones we've got ahead on Sky. I think it's a fantastic time. Uh, we're in Hull in, in a couple of weeks for Luke Campbell and Tommy Coyle. It's going to be a tremendous night there. And then on September the 12th, um, top in the bill, Anthony Joshua uh, and Gary Cornish. It's, uh, it's the right fight for Anthony at, at this time. It's a great opportunity for Gary Cornish, who's unbeaten. Uh, Tommy said uh, to me earlier, unbeaten as an amateur as well as a pro, so he, he doesn't know how, how to lose. And uh, Anthony Joshua, uh, we all feel, is a, is, is a fighter that's destined for the very, very top of the sport. Um, he conducts himself so well. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to be around him and around the journey. Uh, I'm really excited. Uh, and for the undercard as well on, uh, on September the 12th. It's going to be another great night at the O2. But Dave Bryan and John Wayne here, but let's get them together again. I was lucky enough to call their fight last time out. It was one of the fights of the year. And John Wayne was telling me earlier, he thought that was good, this one's going to be even better. So uh, I can't wait for that. But, um, but yeah, great times for, for boxing. Let's, um, let's enjoy it. It's, uh, it's a flourishing sport. And we've got so many great fighters taking us forward. Thanks, Adam. Uh, a few words from from the uh, fighters on this table. A couple of young guys that um, you won't know much about yet, but you will do over the next couple of months and years. And one young man who's already caused a huge stir in British boxing at the moment on, on the smaller level scene, gets his chance to fight at the O2 in Rhys Bellotti. And firstly, uh, a young man that's gonna be making his debut um, on the O2 on September 12th, a, a Southpaw light heavyweight who I watched far many rounds with James DeGale in preparation for the Andre Durrell fight. He's a former English amateur. He's a huge, huge talent, and I'm very excited about his future. Uh, Jay Paul, ahead of your day, you go to. Oh, absolutely buzzing for the, the event. Um, the, well, I spoke to Eddie about two weeks ago, and he confirmed that um, the day he was going to be at the O2 Arena. And um, what a better place to, to, to start a journey as a pro than at a venue like this with Aaron Joshua top of the bill. It's going to be amazing. Can't wait. Obviously, teaming up with, with Jimmy Mack, 
and uh, you know that's fine with Jamie Pigal. I saw him many rounds, hundreds of rounds with him. I've seen him improve a lot through that. I'd definitely let's say well, the sparring was world class. It was world class. I've done hundreds of rounds with James over full camp for his fight, and um, just the preparation, how we trained, obviously because like, it was all behind. It wasn't just the sparring. It was I, I was there for the training. I was there for the groundwork. Everything. It was it's completely different just to what I'm used to. So I, it's going to be a good journey. Stuff. Can't wait to be part of that journey. Reese Bellotti, a young man who may look to be a very nice, very calm guy. He's one of the biggest punching featherweights I've ever seen. I can't tell you how excited I am about this young man. Um, we we originally uh, he we teamed up with Ron Bodie, who's uh, helping out Reese, and of course Jim McDonald as well. And um, he's had two fights now at your call, both times against very durable opponents, and he's demolished them both. Um, one inside a round by one inside about 20 seconds and the other one virtually within a side inside a round. And uh, I'm very, very excited about his progression. He's a two-way ABA champion and he's got a following in Watford. Actually used to play football with Anthony Joshua in Watford. And um, apparently he used to mark him out of the game at all times as well. <laughs> he's a really, really exciting talent. And, and in boxing, obviously, we deal with a lot of elite level fighters, we deal with some huge egos as well. And it's so refreshing to start off on a journey with someone that would literally walk through walls to benefit and progress his career. He's already had two fights in a couple of months, and now he gets the chance. A lot of our guys generally start at the O2 or the NEN Arena, and we might put them on the odd show at your call. Because of the timings of his start, he's had two fights at your call now, and now he gets a chance to box at the O2 on September 12th, as a huge following in Watford. And uh, Reese, I know you're very excited about boxing at the O2. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Uh, oh, I think to box at the O2, to be honest. Just, just to feel the difference in the venue, sort of now, so I've boxed at York all twice, and the step up will be great, can't wait. Obviously, a couple of wins so far at your call. Um, how have you found the transition to the pro game? Easier than expected? Always been renowned as a big puncher, but been surprised at how, how quickly the stoppage has been coming? Uh, yeah, well, obviously, the local opponents are more experienced than me. They're, they're Jim tough opponents that haven't managed to get them out there, so I wasn't expecting to do it the way I did. And uh, yeah, no, the train, obviously the training is totally different with Jim Matt, but I'm enjoying it, I can't wait. Good stuff. The light welterweight division domestically is, without doubt, one of the hottest right now. You saw a British title fight on Saturday night between Tyrone Nurse and Chris Jenkins. I felt that, like Adam did, that Tyrone should have just picked that. Um, and there's a, a lot of top light welterweights on this table. Um, a young man from St. Neots who's got a huge following as well. Again, an absolute pleasure to represent, and, and I'm really enjoying being part of his journey as well. Uh, his opponent will be announced in due course after a successful win against Terry Needham in Liverpool. Tommy Martin. Thanks, Ed. Um, yeah, uh, we had an opponent in mind. Um, we actually, I thought we actually got the fight actually today. But um, this I've just got to stay professional and uh, and um, shut up. Then. And then uh, you can just keep keep my mind on the job and stay away from Danny Connor. <laughs> Obviously, um, you know you boxed up in Liverpool. You actually boxed an eight and one Liverpool fighter last time out, and, and after a shaky start, got through it. But now back to the O2 where you've, you've had some big nights so far. Definitely. Um, listen, I love boxing in Liverpool. I think it's a great fighting city, and and I still take my army up there, fans. So I can't thank my support enough for being there for me. But yeah, back at the O2 on a Saturday night, it's just going to be brilliant, and um, I just can't wait to get it on. One fight, again, in the light welterweight division I just can't wait for on Saturday is a, a local derby between Ricky Boyle and Danny Connor. Um, it's going to be very entertaining in and out of the ring. I think there's going to be a, a lot of banter. Ricky Boyle has gone from a period of two defeats for title fights at the, at the O2, came back with a win recently, and now Ricky involved in, in another must-win fight at the O2 on September as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, you know I know how important it is to, uh, get, to get this win on September. Obviously, you were in a lot of high-pressure fights against John Wayne Hibbert um, and um, sorry, Tommy Martin and Tyler Goodjohn. And two defeats off the back of that, and you come back with a win uh, at, uh, at your call. This is a real must-win fight for you against Danny. Yeah, definitely. And you know, I think Danny's in the same situation as well. So um, you know, I can assure you, September the 12th, we're both going to give it our all. It's going to be a great fight. I'll be coming away with a win. 
Danny, you know you're you know quite shy and uh, <laughs> weren't, weren't really up to this fight too much. But uh, local bragging rights and again important for your career as well. Yeah, of course, every fight's important for our career, isn't it? But um, you know, he says that I've got to win it as as much as yeah. I'd say, I'd, I'd say that's right, but I make a habit of coming back from my defeats. You know, I've boxed at a high level throughout my career. Ricky hasn't. You know, he's a uh, He's been fed journeyman on the way up, you know, which is a lot, you know, not digging him out, but that's a lot of so-called prospects had that. I haven't had that, I've been thrown to the Sharks early on. Um, you know, Evangelou, he was supposed to beat me and bash me up, and that didn't happen. I beat Tyler, someone to beat Ricky. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I know that I'll beat Ricky. There's no there's no other way about it, you know. There's a, He's blocked me on Facebook and Twitter and all the others, so we can't have no, we can't have no joking about on the, on the internet and all that. But it's all right because he's got his sister fighting his corner for him. Hopefully she doesn't turn up with the gloves on the night. But uh, whatever happens, I'll be coming out the winner and Ricky knows it. I know obviously you're um, a boxing nut. You've somehow got hold of my phone number and, what, <laughs> and what's happening after every single fight. Um, telling you who's going to win, who's not going to win. And I know you study boxing as well. What have you seen? Obviously, Jamie switched trainers to Jamie Moore as well. How do you see the fight playing out? I know you did study. Just going to say as well, he's you know in Ricky's you know his team, he's full of people that I respect. You know Jamie Moore and Nigel Travis. You know how can you not respect Jamie Moore and Travis as well? Recently, my mum was really ill in Spain, and um, I've never spoke to Jamie Moore before. And Jamie rang me up, gave me a number, and helped me out for someone out in Spain and spoke. Spanish so I can speak to the doctors and see what was wrong with my mum, you know. That's, that shows what sort of man he is. He's a top fighter. Um, but at the end of the day, Jamie Moore, brilliant pressure fighter, but Ricky Boylan is no Jamie Moore. Not being vicious, you know. That's just how it is, Ricky. Uh, and listen, there's nothing that bothers me about the fight. I've been, like I said, I've been in there with people, bigger punches, better fighters than Rick, and I've always done all right. Um, there's no reason that I won't do all right and I'll get to win online and start my career back up and be back in that lot of way mix. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, again, one fight that I know when uh, Adam asked me who was on the undercard and I told him about this title fight, he was the smile on his face was, was right up there. It was probably one of the best fights I've ever seen live um, at the O2 Arena on May the 30th. It started off our transmission um, actually on free view before we went pay-per-view on May the 30th and the response that he got from everyone was incredible. We saw on Saturday night the British title um, be fought for and also now still vacant. And there is part of me that wants to try and make sure that this fight is also for the British title um, on September the 12th because I think they both deserve it. Sometimes when you have a fight like that, it's very easy for the loser to say, I want that fight again. It's not necessarily the right thing for them to do. Um, and originally, when I spoke to John, it was about getting him back out in October and just having a little win. And he wasn't very happy with that. I know that he wanted to go straight back into the Dave Ryan fight. And for Dave Ryan as well, you know, someone that you know beat John Wayne Hibbert in, in a great fight. It was an opportunity for him as well to progress, and the likes of you know Bradley Saunders. But when I spoke to Clifton and to Dave Ryan and told him how much we wanted to make the fight again, strangely enough, and these people are genuinely mad. Anyone who chooses to get into a ring for a living. We're both up for the fight, and uh, that really makes me want to take my hat off to both fighters because you know, these are the kind of fights that I know are going to entertain the fans. So, John, firstly, chance of uh, redemption on September as well. Yeah, well, he's got to let me win this one anyway. He's done it twice before. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, look, I just want to thank you, Eddie, for making this fight, and Clifton and, and Dave Ryan for taking the fight again. Um, I know where I went wrong last time. Um, we're dealing with that now, and um, hopefully September 12th we're going to come away with a win. It was an incredible back and forward fight. Obviously, you had that day down twice. You had two cuts open up as well. Where did you feel that you went wrong last time? Obviously, the cut played, played a part as well, but they looked like he came on stronger and took over in the back end of the fight. Yeah, well, it was like a robot, wasn't it? It's heavy, right? But no, um, at the end of the day, it was a brilliant fight. Um, I, was, I believe I was winning the fight on the scorecards. Um, I'm not going to make any excuses because I take me off to Dave. He got himself superbly fit and strong for that fight. And um, but I sort of blew out of steam with, uh, along with the cuts. I blew out of steam, sort of from <coughs> eighth, ninth round onwards. And um, he capitalised on it, you know. Um, to get up twice, Harry did. You know, I, 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 
put him down once, refused to get up a second time, certainly wasn't going to get up, but he did, and then, you know, come back and done well. But it's going to be different next time. Obviously, you, you've progressed very well, you've got yourself well ranked, you've got yourself in a great position. This year, again, as, as many people on this table, a must win fight for you. On September 12th, you're going to continue fighting for major title. A million percent, Eddie, yeah. Um, it is a must win fight for me. Um, I believe since our first fight, we both improved hundreds, hundred, hundred percent, you know. Um, and yeah, like I say, it is, it is a must win fight, and come September 12th, I'll show everyone what I made of, and I will win that fight. Dave, obviously, uh, you know, going on what Danny Connor said earlier, you've been slung in really in the early stage of your career. It's been remarkable watching you grow as a fighter and confidence-wise. You know, to win against Tyrone Nurse again, you know, you saw a guy who probably should have won the fight on Saturday. You know, you beat him fairly convincingly, um, had him over a couple of times as well. This this newfound confidence and belief, and obviously working with Clifton and your team, must be uh, you know, great for you. And obviously now, you know, a major figure in the light welterweight division. Yeah, definitely. Um, me and Cliff have been working hard in the gym. Um, good team effort we've got. Um, and uh, I think it's a big mistake that John Wayne's trying to fight for the third time. Because I know I'm just going to win him again, again. But maybe earlier this time. Obviously the first fight was you know, sensational. You were down a couple of times. And, but you, you know, you, your size in the fight as well and your engine just came on. And as the fight progressed, you just looked stronger and stronger. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe I'm a big guy like, all toy. Um, and the longer the fight goes on, the stronger I get. Um, so I'm just really looking forward to it. Training started weeks ago for this fight again, so um, bring it on, you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, moving on to the main event, I think Gary's going to be with us in about five minutes. Uh, Tommy Gilmore, um, gentleman I've known for most of my life. I think it's the first fight we've made together. Um, obviously, I hope you know. You, I think you'd agree with the fact that as a manager. Um, you are on the cautious side, you do a great job for your fighters and now you're in a position with Gary Cornish 21-0 in, in a huge fight and one that I know that he had to convince you almost to accept as well and, and one that he wanted to grab with both hands. Absolutely, but you know, Gary has never experienced a loss, amateur or professional, so he's got to go somewhere and I think that this is possibly the, the liveliest opponent that Anthony ever fought today. I think he, he's going to be somebody that has ambition because as you rightly said, he talked me into it because me being a Scottish manager always wanted to go for big money and postpone the things and build it up. But that wasn't the driving force for Gary. Gary wants to go down to the first first person uh, that's ever fought for a major uh, title at heavyweight in the history of British boxing. Uh, and getting this chance against Andy Joshua, and Andy, what, what he's done as an, an amateur and what he's done so far as a professional, there's nothing short of sensational. So if we can go in, go in there, and we're certainly going in, uh, not to make up the numbers because it's actually not in Gary's nature, but I think we, with Gary with nine amateur fights and 21 pro fights and the will to win, I think that that's, uh, he's a more than worthy opponent. And it, I think that's just what boxing's all about, that we'll get two undefeated prospects you know, we'll get one sensational prospect and we'll get one good prospect coming along and they're both putting their careers uh, today on the line. I think it's fantastic. I think obviously his keenness to take the fight shows you, you know, how he's going to fight on the night. A lot of fighters have come to survive against Anthony Joshua uh, today, but obviously Gary won't be doing that. And like you say, really the first live opponent Anthony Joshua's faced in his career. You know, as you probably said earlier on, you know, I can I get the name of being very cautious. I could have gave Gary another 20 minutes, it wouldn't have been a major problem for me. You know, but he wants to test himself to the very limit. Um, I always say to when, when he signed with me four years ago that this was going to be a five year plan, the five years near, nearly up. You know, and to get this opportunity to fight for the vacant heavyweight championship of the Commonwealth is something major. You know, um, and Gary's been accused sometimes, it's the same as Anthony, that they've been accused that. They've been fighting patches along the way. But it wasn't meant to be patches. But the way they've done their job shows that they're, they're highly talented athletes. And I think that, you know, it's something that you really relish in going forward with. Thanks, Tommy. Anthony, um, I know you always smile and, and don't get too carried away when I introduce you as one of the hottest commodities in world boxing. But um, now we feel, you know, we've, we've talked to you in the taxi on the way that 
those eight round tune ups and ten round gimmies are over now, and this is really championship boxing from here and out in your career. Yeah, there's no turning back now. Going into the second year as a professional in October, I think I've done, uh, I was ahead of schedule when I turned pro. I thought, let me give myself three years to make some mistakes, learn the trade before I start moving on. Um, but I feel we're, we're ahead of schedule. I think everything that Tommy said is true. Two live opponents, um, Gary doesn't like to taste defeat, and that's what I need someone who isn't coming to survive, doesn't talk a good game, someone who's going to deliver on the night. So it's like myself, the guys I fought, you know, I thought there was a path for it, and then it shows different once the bell goes. And it's the same with um, Gary Cornish, the reason why we both went defeated. So come off like surely when we both get in the ring with the confidence that we both got, you probably see the best in us, you know, because. I'll be very wary, cagey, so I want to do my best, and that's the same with him and Norby. I think that a really, really sensational fight. Obviously, your progression so far fought a lot of no disrespect to them, but Jeremy McFine <coughs> and Kevin Johnson, supposed to be your toughest te test today, is a great survivor as well. Mm -hmm. How exciting is it to go in with a young, big, undefeated heavyweight for a major title? I'm looking forward to it. Like, it's given me a chance as well to like uh, recover my body from my last fight from May 30th. And then give me a chance to have like a nine to ten week training camp so I can really condition my mind and my body. So um, ahead of this fight, I should be in peak condition again. Um, I'm really looking forward to it because Cornish brings like the Scottish crowd as well. And last time I went out there, it was unbelievable. So hopefully, we'll bring some of the supporters down as well because they're a good crowd. I was on the card with these, some of these guys on the table, and their fans are amazing as well. So uh, it's going to be it's going to be lively. I hope it sells out. I hope it's a good venue because. Uh, I want, to, I want people to witness what I can do against someone bigger than me, someone taller, probably heavier, and there's a Commonwealth title on the night, and I think I've got a good opportunity this year to clean up. Uh, Lennox won the Commonwealth title against you know, Derek Williams, I think, you know, defended it against Razor Rudder, and from there on his life changed. So I can see like what has been done before me, and I can see if I follow in their footsteps where I can get to. So this is the start of my journey once again into, uh, into the unknown. Obviously, there's a lot of hype, and you, you joke about that as well, and people talking about Wilder and Klitschko and Fury already, but yeah. you know as well heavyweight boxing, and, and you know, saw obviously with David Price at the weekend how quickly a career can change, and an imperative for you not to make mistakes at this stage. Yeah, like the hype is important. It's so important in, in our industry. You guys that are fighting now, now are hard this game, you know what I mean? To, you put so much into it, and then sometimes you get a little return, so you've got, you've got to build yourself. Whatever way you're going to do it, you've got to do it. So you've got to be strategizing yourself, you've got to be smart. And uh, we're going to build this fight to September 12th. It's going to be explosive, so we're going to create as much hype as possible. So as I say, one jump before, because we're on the roll now, we've got, we've got seven and a half weeks. Um, what happened to Price? Shout out to Price, Bronze Mendes. Um, he achieved what I'm trying to achieve by coming Commonwealth British champ. He was European champion as well, wasn't he? No, he was going for the European championship. So. I'm trying to follow him in this book path as well, so until I've passed him, I won't really speak too negatively about him because he's done something that I want to do. Um, but, but it's heavyweight boxing, everyone can bang, every heavyweight's got knockouts on their record, and this is what makes mine and Gary's fight so interesting because, uh, was he 21 and 0 with 14 KOs? So he's got digging in him as well, I'm 13 and 13, so uh, that's why I think it's going to be explosive, it's going to be real good, and uh, someone's, someone's always going to go. They will, of course, Anthony Joshua, um, who has uh, got a stellar career ahead, will fight for his first major title, the vacant Commonwealth heavyweight title on September 12th. Um, Gary is somewhere 10 minutes away, something like that. So we're going to have um, a couple of face-to-faces here, and then photos with Gary Cornish and Anthony Joshua when he arrives, and all guys available here, available for one-on-one. -on -one. So thank you very much. Thank you.